Let's say, just as an example, I take a roll of tape and I kick it, giving initial velocity to the left, and it slides to a stop. Have you seen this before? Third time's a charm. In this example, we are going to know the initial velocity equals negative 2.5 meters per second. Donna Hope, negative simply means? It's moving to the left. It's moving to the left. The uh, coefficient of kinetic friction between the um, surface and the incline here is actually going to be 0 0.11. I don't know if I put 13. 0 0.11. And we're going to try to figure out how far does the roll of tape slide. We are going to use the work due to friction equals a change in mechanical energy, which means the force of friction times the displacement times the cosine of theta equals the mechanical energy final minus the mechanical energy initial. We have taken a quiz on conservation of energy. So at this point, you may graduate. We no longer have to list all those things that could possibly be there and cross off those things that are not there. Now we can start from saying, okay, we know the three different types of mechanical energy. We can list the things that are there. So before we use this equation, however, what must we do? Matt. Um, set final initial points in zero. Just like conservation of energy, notice how it has the initial and final points. So we need to identify our initial and final points, and we need to identify the zero one. It's sliding from right to left, so we'll set our initial point over here, our final point over here, and a logical place for the zero line would be at the floor. Starting on the far right, mechanical energy initial. What sort of energy does the roll of tape start with when it's in its initial position, which is right here after I have kicked it, giving it its initial velocity to the left of 2.5 meters per second. Andrea, please list the three different types of mechanical energy and tell me whether they are there or not, initially. It has kinetic energy because it's moving. Okay, so we know first off, 1 half mv initial squared, it's kinetic energy because the velocity initial is not zero. Uh, there's potential energy, elast or elastic potential energy, which doesn't have this, there aren't any springs. No springs, no elastic potential energy. And there could also be potential energy due to gravity, but it's on the zero line. So Therefore? It doesn't have to be. The height of initial above the zero line is zero, so there's no gravitational potential energy. That's what it starts with, only kinetic energy. What about mechanical energy final? What sort of energy does it end with, please? Hannah. Well, just, just walk through them one at a time. So list them and tell me whether it has it or not. What else? Okay, it doesn't have kinetic energy because the velocity final zero comes to a stop. Notice it's still on the zero line, so there's zero gravitational potential energy. Therefore, how much uh, mechanical energy does it end with? Zero. Notice it ends with zero mechanical energy. So it starts with all kinetic energy, and it ends with zero mechanical energy. Where did all of that kinetic energy go? Sam. It became uh, heat and sound energy. Heat and sound. Notice the kinetic energy decreases as the velocity decreases. And so what's going to happen is, one, you can hear it as it slides. Two, the roll of tape and the floor are both actually going to increase in internal energy, or the temperature of the roll of tape and the floor are both going to increase. Great. On the left-hand side, we have the force of friction times d times the cosine of theta. What are we going to do on the left-hand side of this equation? <laughs> Elizabeth? True, I agree. Keep going. Um, we do not know the 
True, that's what we're trying to find. Um, but we do know the angle. Which is? Uh, 180 degrees. So we know we can put in 180 degrees for the angle. What about the force kinetic friction? What can we do with that? Um, we can use the K times force normal. We have the equation for the force of kinetic friction. It's mu K times force normal. Great. Aaron, what can we do now? Well, you know the UK, but you don't know force normal. True. So you could draw a free body diagram and some forces. Go ahead, give me a free body diagram for the roll of tape, which is sliding to your left. Okay, force normal is up and perpendicular. Force of gravity is down. And force of kinetic friction is to the right. Is that it? What about the force applied? There's no force applied. There's no force applied? Kudos to you. Yes, you're, you are correct. There's no force applied. The force applied gave it the initial velocity of 2.5 meters per second left, but it's not our free body diagram while it's sliding to a stop. We need to figure out the force normal, so we can sum the forces in the y direction. We get force normal minus the force of gravity equals mass times the acceleration in the y direction. The acceleration in the y direction is equal to zero. It's not moving up or down. Therefore, we get the force normal minus the force of gravity is equal to zero. Therefore, we can add the force of gravity both sides. We get the force normal equals the force of gravity, which equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Class, have you seen that before? Try that again. Class, have you seen that before? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Done that on several occasions. That's why I kind of slipped through that quickly. But we've seen it many times. We have force normal equals force of gravity equals mass times the acceleration of gravity. We can now substitute that back into our work equation up here. We get mu k times m times g times d times negative 1, because the cosine of 180 is negative 1, is equal to negative 1 half times the mass times velocity initial squared. Matt. Everyone got mass to Oh, even better. Everyone got negative mass to the part. We can take negative mass from everyone and still be equitable. We have mu k times g times d equals velocity initial squared divided by 2. Our goal is to solve for d, so d is equal to the velocity initial squared divided by 2 mu k times g. We have all these numbers, negative 2.5 squared divided by 2 times 0 0.11 times g, which is 9.8. With sig fix, 2.9 meters. Do we take the square root? We can't just make that negative, can we? But I am confused, because it is to the left, is it not? I mean, we know it's to the left, and yet we're getting a positive number out of this, Chad. It's displacement. Ah, but displacement should have a, because displacement as a vector should have a direction. We've clearly identified, we started with our initial velocity, which was to the left, so it was negative. And yet we're getting a positive answer for our displacement. Is it because when we're using work, we don't have a direction? Very close. But remember, work can be positive or negative. I agree, work is a scalar, but it has more to do with the force and the displacement when you use the work equation. But it has the, you only have the angle. It's the angle. It's, it's very close. I, I want to make sure we get this correct. Uh, Tom? In the equation for work, force and displacement are scalars. Remember, when you use force and displacement in your work equation, you use the magnitude only of those. Which means if you're going to solve for either the force or the displacement, you're going to get the magnitude out of it. You're never going to get a direction out of this because it's the magnitude of the force and the displacement that you use for the equation. So if you solve for one, you're just going to get the magnitude. Which is why I've asked the question, how far does the roll of tape slide rather than what's the displacement? Because from the question, you only get how far it slides. 